working. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has dropped the plan to require an extensive environmental review before handing mortgages to people that plan to use the land for oil and gas drilling. Now, this has outraged opponents of hydraulic fracturing who say it eases up rules on the drilling method. They believe the practice comes with extremely harmful health and environmental risks. So another debate over energy rages on in America. And to talk more about this, I'm joined now by, by our very own Christine Frizzell. Nice to see you, Christine. Um, so I know that you've been following this story for a while. You went over to um, a town called Dimmick, Pennsylvania um, yourself and to see how this method, hydraulic fracturing, is affecting folks over there. Tell me a little bit about your experience and what you found out. Well, I was there almost two years ago, and it is a very small city in Pennsylvania, a very rural area. But it's, you know, it's a nice area. It's a place where a lot of people go to retire. Uh, they have these homes, and what a lot of them found was they would move into these homes, and they would discover that the value of their homes was almost completely lost, if not completely lost, because the fracking on their land, which they were told would be a win-win situation. Uh, Cabot Oil and Gas was the name of this particular company, but there are gas companies everywhere. They were told, as many people are, that if they signed away the rights to their land so that it could be drilled on, that they would get money, that they would make tons of, um, you know, commission basically on the natural gas that was drilled from their land. Uh, and it would be a, a great thing and it would bring jobs to the area, which it did bring some jobs, but most of the people actually came from Texas to do this. Um, that's not how it played out. Basically, uh, people reported seeing, you know, getting open sores on their leg. There was an entire street I went to called Carter Road in which just about every resident on that street had major problems, uh, skin breakouts, uh, and their lives are essentially ruined. And that was nearly two years ago. And um, this was two years ago. Have you talked to any of the people you've interviewed since? And how are they doing these days? Are they better, better yeah, off? Yeah, you know, worse? I've stayed in touch with quite a few of them, especially over Facebook. They have a, a bunch of groups. And uh, it, it's sad to say, essentially, their lives uh, have not really changed. When I was there, uh, I believe it was really just about this time in, in 2009. And um, a lot of them had these huge, uh, imagine, you know, like a 12-person jacuzzi, a, a huge tank put outside their house. And Cabot Oil and Gas paid for them to get water delivered every single day because previously their indoor plumbing was connected to their well, but their well was polluted. Uh, and so, you know, they're still getting this water delivered every day. They still can't, um, they don't feel safe. Their, their property values are low. And, and that's what's crazy, the, the intro into this story, how, how you said, uh, no longer is there a requirement to do testing on this land. This is an in-your-face example of these oil and gas companies really just being in bed with way too many members of Congress because there's no reason why testing shouldn't be done. And, uh, you know, some other things have happened as well. Uh, the Bureau of Land Management had a, um, a new set of rules where they were going to require these companies to at least list, you know, not do additional testing, just list the chemicals that were in uh, you know, the, the fracking fluid that they were putting in, there's ways to get around it now. And, and so clearly, when you take away this transparency, you got to ask what's going on here. And what do you think is going on? I mean, it doesn't seem like people's health is in, is what, what they're concerned about. Yeah, I mean, you know, looking at this from a, a faraway standpoint, you could say, ah, oh, these are just small town people looking for a lawsuit. But these people were extremely, uh, you know, they were simple, honest people, and they were shocked to find that you know, their animals were getting sick, their cells were having respiratory problems, they were having, as I said, skin problems. So I, I'm not sure exactly what was going on. I, I think to me some of the water, uh, w when this is happening, and I'll give sort of a brief uh, introduction of what fracking is for those people who don't know. Basically, millions of gallons of water are basically put down at high pressure into the earth, many, many, many feet, I think it's almost a mile down into the earth, combined with sand, and some chemicals. And what it does is it fractures the rock and draws out the natural gas. On face value, this is a very good thing. I think having the ability to drill for natural gas in this country, I think, is a great thing. But what we think is happening, and what even the EPA has acknowledged a little bit, is that these chemicals were leaking out of the area that they were supposed to stay in, and they were getting into the land and into the wells of these people's homes.
And you said that people were having or getting sick, had skin reactions. Right. Um, has it been proven that that was in fact a result of fracking? Well, I think if you're going to take this to a court of law, which they're in the process of doing, you have a street, an entire street, and many other homes in the area in which people were just fine. They agreed to have. Uh, drilling, fr fracking take place on their land, and all of them started getting the same symptoms. Uh, and, you know, we showed in, in one of the stories that I did something similar into the, at the as the documentary um, Gasland that Josh Fox did, where this person, and we saw it with our own eyes, he lit the water from his sink on fire. So who, I, I don't know anyone that's going to tell you, oh, that's just normal. Anyone that puts a match to their sink water is going to see that. No, it's not. So when you can light your water on fire, you start getting skin reactions, uh, proof is in the pudding. All that, if your water catches on fire, something, something is not right. Chrissy, thank you for keeping us updated on this story. That was our very own Arctic correspondent, Christine Frizzow.